So let's look at the orthogonal projection problems. In the first two problems, we're using the vector u as 1, 3, negative 2, and the vector v as 0, negative 1, 1. Okay, so we're trying to find the projection of u onto v, which is the inner product of u and v over the inner product of v and v times the vector v. All right, so in the first problem here, we're using the dot product as the inner product. So in this uh, problem number one here, we know that the inner product of u and v would be the dot products. So that's 1 times 0 plus 3 times negative 1 plus negative 2 times 1, which is 0 minus 3 minus 2 is negative 5. The inner product of v with itself would be 0 squared uh, plus negative 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is just going to be 2. So the uh, magnitude here is going to be negative 5 over 2. The vector v is 0, negative 1, 1. So that means that the projection would be 0, neg uh, zero 5 halves, positive, right? And then negative 5 halves. This one's positive. Negative 5 halves there. All right, so let's look at number 2. Instead of projecting u onto v, we are going to project v onto u. So uv is still the top. I mean, it could be written as vu, but then the bottom is u times u, and then we're doing this with vector u. So we know that uv is still negative 5. We know that uu is going to be the magnitude of u squared, so that's 1 squared plus 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. So that's 1 plus 9 plus 4 is 14. So my magnitude here is negative 5 over 14 times the vector 1, 3, negative 2. So that's negative 5 over 14, negative 15 over 14, and then the 2 and the 14 cancel, so that's going to be positive 5 over 7. All right, so that's problems 1 and 2. All right, so we do something very similar with 3 and 4, um, except now we're changing the vectors, right? Um, so in 3 and 4... The vector u, stop, the vector u is now 4, 0, negative 1, and the vector v is 1, 3, negative 2. All right, so the first thing we need is the projection of u onto v. So that's inner product uv over u, sorry, um, vv uh, times vector v. The inner product of u and v is going to be 4 times 1 plus 0 times 3 plus negative 1 times negative 2 which is 4 plus 2, which is 6. The inner product of VV is going to be 1 squared plus 3 squared plus negative 2 squared 
that's 1 plus 9 plus 4, which gets me 15. Sorry, 14. 14. So 6 over 14 is 3 sevenths. And this is going to be times 1, 3, negative 2. So this comes out as 3 sevenths, 9 sevenths, negative 6 sevenths is the projection. All right, so now we want the other projection. So this is number 3. Number 4 is to project V onto U. So again, the numerator is still UV. You can write it as VU, but it's the same thing. The denominator is now UU times U, right? So we still know that UV doesn't change. That's still 6. UU is 4 squared plus 0 squared plus negative 1 squared which is 16 plus 1, which is 17. So my coefficient here is 16 over 17. 6 over 17 times 4 is 0, negative 1, which gives me 24 over 17, 0, negative 6 over 17. And that's the projection for number 4. All right, so number 5 gets us to a projection, but we're using um, uh, an integral inner product here. So we want the projection, <coughs> excuse me, of uh, Okay, so this is the projection of f onto g, which is the inner product of fg over gg times g. Okay, so I need the inner product of fg, which is the integral from negative 1 to 1 of x times 1 dx, which is going to be half x squared from negative 1 to 1, which is half. 1 squared is 1 minus negative 1 squared is 1. So that just comes out as 0. And that's like really fortunate for me because that means that the projection of f onto g is 0 over whatever g g is. And since g is not the 0 function, that can't be 0 times g, which just means that I'm going to get the 0 function. So that was pretty simple. Uh, let's move on to number six. Okay, six doesn't work out so nicely. Um, so this is the projection of f onto g. So again, this is f times g over f, sorry, gg, not ff. g, g times g. Okay, so we first have to get f, g which here, this is still the integral from negative 1 to 1. The two functions here are x cubed minus x times 2x minus 1 dx. Uh, I think the easiest thing to do here is to expand these. So that's going to be 2x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 2x squared plus x d x. Okay, so if we take the antiderivatives there, we get 2 fifths x to the fifth minus 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 2 thirds x cubed plus half x squared from negative 1 to 1. When I put the 1's in there, I get 2 fifths minus 1 fourth minus 2 thirds plus a half. When I put the negative ones in there, I get negative two-fifths minus a fourth plus two-thirds uh, plus a half. So this guy and this guy are going to cancel, and so are those when we do the subtraction. So this is going to be four-fifths and this is going to be 
minus four thirds. So this is 12 fifteenths minus 20. Uh, fifteenths, which should be negative eight fifteenths. All right, so that's part way there, right? That's just the numerator. So let's kind of put that as negative eight fifteenths, and let's get some space here. All right, so continuing that problem, I also need the g times itself. So this is going to be integral from negative one to one of 2x minus 1 squared dx. Again, I think I elected to expand this, so that's 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 dx, which is going to give me 4 thirds x cubed minus 2x squared plus x. Okay, so this is from the interval from negative 1 to 1. So when I put the 1's in there, I'm going to get 4 thirds minus 2 plus 1. When I put the negative 1's in there, I'm going to get negative 4 thirds minus 2 minus 1. The 2's fall out, right? So this is going to give me 8 thirds plus 2, which is plus 6 thirds, which is 8 and 6 is 14 thirds. All right, so that's this 14 thirds but we're dividing by that so we're going to put 3 14 here and then the function is the g function which is the 2x minus 1 so 3 goes into 15 5 times 8 and 4 are both the 14 are both divisible by 2 so this is going to give me negative 4 35ths times 2x minus 1 which is negative 8 over 35x plus 4 over 35. So there's the function that is the projection of one onto the other. All right, so let's try for number 7 here. So number 7 is again a projection of f onto g. So again, we're using fg over gg for g. Note the inner product here is different. It's the integral not from negative 1 to 1, but it only goes from 0 to 1. So we're working with a different domain there. Um, so this is fg will be integral from 0 to 1 of x times e to the x dx. This should start looking familiar as being a by parts problem. Uh, du dx is 1, which means du is dx. Take the integral of both of these, we get v is e to the x, right? So kind of resolving that, uv is x e to the x from 0 to 1 minus the integral from 0 to 1 of v du. All right, so I put a 1 in there and I just get e. I put a 0 in there and I get 0. And then I'm going to get e to the x from 0 to 1. So this is e minus e, which is 0, which is fantastic, because that means that my projection is 0 over something that's not 0 times g, which just gives me the 0 function. So that one works out kind of quickly. I don't have to resolve the denominator because the numerator is 0. All right, so let's look at number 8. OK, so this is, again, a projection of f onto g. So then I need fg over gg. Um, different inner product here. We're taking the integral from negative pi to pi. So the integral from negative pi to pi. If I want the fg, then I have to take sine of x times the cosine of x dx. 
this is a, a classic u substitution just let u be the sine of x uh, du dx is going to be the cosine of x which means that dx is du over the cosine of x now something fascinating here happens in the bounds if you push the bounds through this you get the integral from zero to zero of u times the cosine of x times du over the cosine of x those cancel gives me the integral from zero to zero of u du which has to be zero because the bounds are zero so in the end of the day i can just stop there my projection then of g to f is zero over g g times g which is zero all right so that one looks much crazier but it actually, with the U substitution, comes out fairly simple. All right, so let's look at number nine here. Um, again, we're a projection of F onto G. F of G over GG times G. Uh, we need the inner product of F and G. And this time we're negative pi to pi of sine of 3x dx um, again not so difficult um, the antiderivative there is one third sine of sorry not sine uh, sine is the negative cosine of 3x from negative pi to pi uh, so this is negative a third cosine of 3x is the same as the cosine of 1 which is negative 1 the cosine of negative 3x is also going to be the co is going to be also be negative 1 so this is negative a third times 0 which is 0 which from earlier examples tells me that the projection uh, of f onto g is 0 because it's 0 over g times g which gives me back zero so let's move on to number 10 10 feels a little challenging at first um, but if you pull a trig identity it's not so bad um, I want the projection of f sorry I want the projection of f onto g right which is fg over gg times g so i need the integral from negative pi to pi of sine of 2x times sine of 3x dx now you can stop this and go look this up but there's a trig identity which says that if I have sine alpha times sine beta, sine beta, that is equal to half cosine alpha minus beta minus cosine alpha plus beta. Um, have some fun with that. Go look it up. Um, it is there or try to prove it one way or the other. We'll get there. So that means this is negative pi to pi of cosine of 2 minus 5 is negative 3x minus cosine 2x plus 5x is going to be uh sorry 2 minus 3 Ooh, um that should just be negative x uh, oops negative x and then minus cosine 5x right dx so cosine of negative x becomes sine of negative x uh, minus one fifth sine of 5x from negative pi to pi uh, sine of negative pi is zero sine of 5 pi is 0 
uh, sine of, uh, let's see, it's going to be sine of pi is zero, uh, sine of negative five pi is zero, makes it all zero. So that one tells me that the projection then from of f on to g is just the zero function. And that's it. That's all she wrote. Um, hope that makes sense. Thank you.